Brian Kelly may have slipped up and announced who the next Notre Dame head coach is going to be. He was doing an interview with NBC Sports for their Race in America, a Candid Conversation uh, series, and he said this about Marcus Freeman, his current defense coordinator who came over from Cincinnati. My defensive coordinator is black, and he's going to be the next head coach, Kelly said while on a panel with Steph Curry, Dill Curry, Vince Carter, Jimmy Rollins, Justin Tuck, CC Sabathia, and Kyle Rudolph. This is not about color or race. This is about the things that he just talked about. Steph talked about the important things to be a CEO and understanding how to make people around you better. Now, Marcus Freeman has come into Notre Dame and significantly upgraded their recruiting efforts. I'm ta- They are currently, I think, number two in the country for next season. And Notre yeah. Dame has not had success like that on the recruiting nope. trail. In, now, again, it's early. Early. We I was going to say, we, we don't think they'll finish number two, right? Yeah, no, I don't believe so. But it's not out of the realm of possibility. They are in for some pretty sure. big guys. So sure. he has he's upgraded what they've been doing there. And while we have not seen him coach a game there, the, the reviews out of camp are through the roof. Everybody Look, loves gr- him. Like, he was the prize of all of the DCs coming out this year. He just was. He was. And and you he and I were trying. Wanted. We tried to figure out that right because he had the option of picking LSU or well, Notre Dame. And well, now I think he told LSU. I took. I think he took Notre Dame. And I told you this. I'm an LSU guy. I'm an LSU fan. You got Ed on the wall back here. Okay. Like, I think Notre Dame's a better job. It's just a better job. Especially for a guy that you know, Midwest based. Especially you know, I don't, I don't care Cincinnati. about any of that. I don't care about any of that. He could have been based out of California. He could have been based out of Florida. He could have been based out of Mexico. It doesn't matter. You think Notre, Notre Dame, Dame overall, is a better job? Interesting. It's a better job outside of the SEC. A hundred percent of the people would agree with that. Okay, inside of the SEC, I think fifty percent of the people agree with that. All okay. right. Okay. I that's, think there's a few likely. select people that think LSU is a better job than Notre Dame. And I think those people, that's fine to have that opinion. They're wrong. Notre Dame is, has a much bigger platform, a much bigger fan base, a, a much bigger voice overall. They're independent. They have their own contract. They don't play little brother to anybody ever. No, it's 100% a better job. That makes sense. End of story. And so on top of that, also situationally, Brian Kelly is getting older I don't know if if Ed Orgeron wins this season. I don't think he's going anywhere for a while. I, I don't oh, no, think that we've got that. No. So if that is the case, if Brian Kelly is getting on up there and he, he, you know, eventually wants to step down, if that's something that he sold Marcus Freeman on, I could I could see it. Now you and I believe that Marcus Freeman was going to be a head coach at some point at some level anyway. But him coming out and saying this now, of course, it's unclear whether or not he was talking about just a a college foot like he'll be the next big coordinator that gets a head coaching job or does he mean that he will be Notre Dame's next head coach who knows at this point like what he said uh, he's going to be the next head coach you can take a lot from that but I do think it's interesting the way that he said it so I mean who knows I'm I'm Gary Brian Kelly is 59 years old that's he's been there forever Gary he's 59 he's, he's 59 years old when you said that I was like I don't think he's that old I thought he was in his 60s. No, no. He's right, not I would have never said that if I didn't. <laughs> I know that. Okay. I know. That's why, that's why I brought it up. I do appreciate that. Uh, he's, uh, not, he's, not, he's not that old. He's not going anywhere. I don't think this is a Notre Dame situation. Okay. I, I think, or unless Brian Kelly has an, you know ambitions of going to the NFL. Or, There's not a better job in college football than Notre Dame. I just believe that. Now, you it's really hard to win a national championship there. If if Dabo Sweeney got hit by a bus, do we think he could take that job? If Nick Saban decided to retire, do we think he'd take that job? Those two jobs, Ohio State maybe. Like th- that's that's probably the list of the jobs that are better than Notre Dame in the country. And even then, I still don't know that those are better jobs. You can win championships much easier at those jobs than you can at, at Notre Dame. You you don't you don't have to have players that can read and in Notre Dame you do. I I this just is his eleventh season, is that right? No, twelfth, uh, twenty ten through now. Yeah, 10 or, yeah, something like that. So, okay, uh, twelve years at Notre Dame. Well, but uh, look at look at it this way. I mean, you you see how much stress he puts on himself during football seasons. God. I think there's a chance that maybe he he retires. Does early. anybody does anybody ever say this shit about Nick Saban? Uh, no, I guess not. I guess okay, I, 
Well, I'm just. Right. I, I'm, Anybody saying shit about Mac Brown? What? You're acting like I'm personally attacking you, and I'm no, not. I don't. I'm I don't curious. understand why. I don't understand why certain people you make arguments for, but you're not consistent across the board. Why can some guys do this job until they're 80, and the other guys, as soon as they turn 60, they're out the door? Oh no, him. I'm not saying he's out the door. I also just watched Chris Peterson retire at 55, and I watched okay. uh, Bob Stoops retire at 55. Okay, so that's why those I'm are, questioning. Is those it are possible? anomalies. But those are those are are how many people in the ethos of college football have we seen walk out on their own terms at that age? I think the list is three. It's those two guys and Lion Urban Meyer. Yeah, and Urban only I mean, does it, it when he thinks he's about to get in trouble or his teams <laughs> are about to go downhill. Yeah. That's it. And and Urban is of course back coaching. So that's right. That's know. right. So so that's that's the list. Is is the list is two people out of the ethos of all of the coaches? Now, how many coaches coach till they're eighty? That were allowed to coach until they're eighty, because I think that list is substantially longer than than two. Yeah, probably, probably so. I mean, that that does make sense. Uh, Urban Meyer, by the way, fifty seven years old, so yes. two years younger than Brian Kelly. Who knows? Lots of lots like, of health problems, though. Lots of health problems. <laughs> of course, he's still got them. Still dealing with them. Maybe maybe it's better down in Florida. I don't I don't see Brian Kelly going anywhere. I think this is him saying this guy is in a few years. Everybody, he's going to be at the top of everybody's list to be a head coach. And I believe that, by the way. And whenever Brian Kelly decides to walk away from Notre Dame, I think, I think this is going to be somebody that, unless he takes a job and really hurts his his reputation, I think he's going to be at the top of Notre Dame's list. Marcus Freeman is thirty five years old. By the oh no, he's yeah. he's he's crazy young. And I I wanted him at LSU. You know that that was my that was my that is the only I had a one name list for defensive coordinator. I, I wanted to. I wanted to take the guy we had, and I wanted to throw him off that big ass bridge, and I wanted to go get Freeman. Yes, That's you it. Did. That's it. and I, and I just wanted him to walk in the door and say, "How much money do you want?" I got a blank check. We just paid this guy twenty something million dollars to leave as a, as a coordinator. What do you want? Yeah, yeah, I can I can definitely see that it didn't work. But I, I'm gonna tell you, if <laughs> I was him and I was offered both these jobs and I didn't have any fandom or love involved, Notre Dame's a better job. Just it just is. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. If Ryan Day ever ends up going to the NFL, this could be a leading candidate for that. Of course, yeah. he went to school at Ohio State, drafted in the fifth round in 2009. Now, at now I will tell you this. If you're noted, if you're Iowa State, you see what Luke Fickle has become. I know Luke Fickle did a little interim thing at Iowa, Ohio State. Iowa, it's at Iowa State. Right now, one guy's already in the state of Ohio, and he's a head coach, and he's turned a kind of a nothing school that – Tommy Tupperville ran to the ground into a national legitimate power. Uh, I use the word power loosely. Very big power in their conference and at their yes. level and can compete with the big boys. Now you got two former Ohio State guys that are both in the Midwest and both have a hell of a resume. That are fighting for... Uh, and they're both defensive guys. Yes. That, which yes. Ohio State hasn't had... I have no idea when the last time they had a defensive head coach. I, well, I mean, Trussell, like... Was the Trussell way, a defensive guy? Well, the way that he coached was was very much... Well, that. no, that was the style of football, but he wasn't like a defensive coordinator that got that job, right? No, no, you're right. Um, I don't think he was a defensive guy. I just think football was played at a defensive level back then. No, I, think, I thought Trussell was an OC. Well, I mean, he was a head coach at, uh, at Youngstown State. No, yes, not Youngstown. But I, no. Yeah, I Youngstown think State. His, yeah, it's um, Youngstown. I think his background was offense. But I, yeah, it was. I could be it was. Well, and it doesn't matter, by the way. I'm, I'm looking at a quarterback. Uh, right, uh, blah, blah, blah. He was Ohio State's quarterback, running back, and wide receivers coach. Yeah, so uh, he's an offensive guy. Yeah, I don't know when the last time. I mean. I mean, before hmm. Trestle, who who was it before Trestle? Was it, was it Woody? I don't know the answer to that. I don't Let's think see. Woody coached that late, did he? I don't think so. Now we're getting into the weeds of something that. Is not important and does not matter. You're you're going on twenty years of not hiring a defensive guy. No, no. Woody was seventy eight. Who in the world was Ohio State? Yeah, I was about to say. I think there was a couple of people before him and Woody. And, but all of them were uh, Earl Bruce and then John Cooper. It was Cooper. I don't. God, I don't that's know who either of those guys' name. Don't know who they are. Don't know where they came from. Don't know anything. Earl Bruce matter. is uh, is uh, Urban Meyer's mentor. It's so. it's it's been over twenty years and they've never hired. They haven't hired a defensive guy. So yeah, but I do think those would be one and two on their list. I, I might yeah. be wrong about that. I I don't think you are. I don't think you are. I actually I have no idea why Ryan Day would walk away. By the way, like that even even for the NFL today, 
I mean, if a if a really stable job came open, like somebody at a good place retired, that would be one thing. But like Andy Reid's not retired anytime soon. Sean Payton's not. Bill Belichick's not. Like those are the only older coaches that would retire and leave a really good job open. Yeah, no, you're right about that. All the other jobs are going to be unstable as hell. And I wouldn't leave Ohio State for the NFL for those. And this is a guy, I love the NFL, all right? (laughs) I'm the defender here. But what coaches make in college and what they make in the pros ain't a whole lot different, man. No, no. And there's... There's no off time in in college in either but, in either sport, but in either sport, really. I mean, I don't know that there's. A but whole right lot of now, when you're at an institution like Ohio State, you're not recruiting. Like like no. Nick Saban doesn't spend weeks and months recruiting. Like like though they come to him, Ryan Day, they come to him. Yes, you know? uh, John John Cooper was the last defensive guy. So he, when he was, was that in the eighties? He was eighty eight through two thousand. So, Holy shit! Yeah, before Trestle, There's, and then that was a long time. Yeah. It goes for twelve years. Yeah, I think I think that's, I think it's technically thirteen seasons. Uh, but yeah, like okay, it's, whatever. It, yeah, so he was he was the defensive coordinator before he was right. Tulsa's head coach, Arizona State's head coach, and then Ohio State's head coach. That we so. just went into the weeds of Ohio State's coaching history for, <laughs> while we're talking about Notre Dame for nothing. That's, that's the for way nothing. it goes. Do you really think Brian Kelly might open this job in the like next couple of years, regardless of who gets it? I just. It, it's it's why I'm asking the question, right? I'm just curious, you know, what is his mindset? Like, does he want to? You don't see a lot of guys stick around at a school no. for longer well, than what he's been there. I would tell you this: it's easier to stay at a college for this long than it is at the pros because the kids constantly change over. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. So in the NFL, it's rare to see somebody coach for ten years at the same place. Well, it's, and in college, it, when you've got a relationship with, because of the GM ain't changing. Like no. all that, it's the AD and the president. That's your bosses. That's right. So if you've got a good relationship well, with them. And, and, and know, I'll tell you this, that ain't your bosses. When you're at that level, you can get those guys fired before they can get you fired. Yeah. As long as you're not breaking rules or breaking laws, you can get those guys fired much easier than they get you fired. Yes. Yes, That's I agree. Truth. That's the truth. You don't, you don't have, like technically you have people that sign your paychecks, but you don't have bosses. You're the most powerful people on the university. You can get anything you want done. You you are the godfather of the mob boss at, at college universities. And you don't have to worry about your song and dance, your shtick ever getting old because by the time it gets old, those fifth-year seniors are gone and you got a whole new group of people to tell all your jokes to yes. and to get all your one-liners to and to get all your coach speak out of. When you get in the NFL and somebody's been on the roster for six years, that shit ain't going to fly. The jokes anymore. are not funny anymore. That's all right. your old, that, that old man that dad jokes ain't working. That's right. It ain't working. Well, all, it's not just the jokes. All your motivational tactics, all your if you're winning, then people care and they'll listen. If you're not, they no longer trust you as their coach and it's over. And that's that's the difference between the pros and the NFL in college. Yes. Yes, you're correct. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.